Good morning. Thanks for waking up with Sunrise. I'm Emily Scarlett. Mary and Leland had the day off. It's finally Friday and many of you are looking toward the weekend, but there's some rain and colder weather headed our way. Let's go to meteorologist Tim Miller for details on these alert days for the weekend. Tim. That's true, Emily. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. That certainly is uh, good news uh, to our ears, is it not? This is our view from space. Uh, it's cloudy and clouds all over the place. A developing story today. Crews have been out all through the night inspecting the Allen Benedict Court Apartments in Columbia after two people were found dead during a series of gas leaks. Columbia Fire says crews began inspections at 10 p.m. yesterday after residents noticed they smell gas. Officials say those inspections would continue through the early hours this morning. Officials say officers went to the apartments for a welfare check yesterday morning and found one person dead. That prompted a neighbor to alert officials to a different person in the building who had not been seen in a few days. That person was also found dead. At this point, there's no official cause of death, but since they cannot rule out things like carbon monoxide, no one is being let inside until the building is deemed safe. Well, I think it's always good to make sure you do a thorough check of every unit when you have a, any type of issues. So our plans is, is to work with the police department, uh, with, with Fish Code Enforcement folks, and maybe come out here and do a, a joint um, inspection of all the buildings. Chief Jenkins says he did not see any carbon monoxide detectors inside the units upon first glance and did not hear any going off. Gas has been shut off to the building and firefighters say there's no risk to the surrounding area. We'll take a look at how some neighbors are reacting to the situation coming up in the next half hour. All new on Sunrise, state officials are hoping to combat the dangers of illegal cell phones behind bars by giving inmates tablets instead. Corrections Director Brian Sterling told the Associated Press that the devices will help inmates make cheaper calls home and get education and even buy pre-approved streaming movies and music services through a secure Wi-Fi network. Sterling says he hopes the devices will make cell phones less attractive to inmates. In your crime alert this morning, Lexington police are looking for a woman who they say took a five finger discount on a meat at a local grocery store. Police believe this woman stole nearly $350 worth of meat from the Lowe's Foods on Sunset Boulevard earlier this month and walked out of the store with it concealed in a bag. It's believed she was traveling in a red SUV. Call Crime Stoppers at one triple eight crime SC if you know anything. Detectives in Lexington County want to identify two people believed to be involved in a larceny investigation. They say they believe this man and woman are linked to an incident that happened at Walmart in Red Bank. They say they were seen leaving the store in a champagne colored Izu rodeo. If you know who they are, call Crime Stoppers. Again, that number is one triple eight crime SC. A man police say threw hot coffee onto a teenager is out of jail this morning on bond. Camden police say Joshua Noel confessed to that incident at a McDonald's last month. The employee told police Noel was upset over a long wait in the drive through for French fries. Noel turned himself in to police yesterday and has been charged with second degree assault and battery. Inside SC Schools, Lexington Richland School District 5 is putting an enrollment freeze on two middle schools in that district. That means any new families who move into the attendance zones for Chapin Elementary or Lake Murray Elementary after January 22nd, that's next Tuesday, will be reassigned to a different school. It's part of a plan to address overcrowding in the district. Families impacted by that freeze will have the option of selecting the schools now listed on your screen for reassignment. Transportation will be available to most of the options with some exceptions. You can read which schools that includes by going to this story on our WIS News app. Next week, athletes will try to get their brand new arena at Brooklyn Casey High School in West Columbia. School leaders say the first event will be the rivalry basketball games against Airport High School this coming Tuesday. Here are the pictures of the 1500 seat arena, including a college length basketball court, state of the art weight room with a 50 yard turf run and a Hall of Fame room. This is all part of the $225 million package of improvements approved by Lexington to vote back in 2014. 
Today, the Gamecock inaugural kicks off in USC's newly renovated indoor track and field complex. The action starts at 9 a.m. today and tomorrow in the old USC Fieldhouse on Hayward Street. Admission is five bucks for adults and three for children 17 and under. USC students get in free with their Carolina cards. Seating is first come first serve. After that, it's standing room only. Each fan is allowed to bring one folding chair that can be placed in a safe and approved location. It's no secret the roads in South Carolina can be pretty bad and bumpy. That's why SCDOT officials are out launching their pothole blitz to repair troubled spots over the next few weeks. WIS's Genesis Neros rode around with SCDOT off Bush River Road and tells us what goes on behind the scenes. On my ride along, I saw crews fill about six or seven potholes. SCDOT says they've already gotten nearly 5,000 reports of pothole locations from the public just in the first week of this blitz. To report a pothole, visit our website at WISTV.com for more information. Happening this weekend, a free recycling event for folks in Lexington County. People can drop off up to eight electronic items and eight gallons of household hazardous waste for recycling tomorrow at Forts Pond Elementary School. You can also take up to five boxes of bags of paper documents for shredding and any household goods of, or furniture that you'd like to donate to Goodwill. The only thing not being accepted are refrigerators. The event runs from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. at the school in Pillion. Tomorrow, the town of North in Orangeburg County will celebrate the life of famous singer and actress and activist as well, Eartha Kitt. Kitt was born in North and the town celebrates her legacy each year on Eartha Kitt Day, which falls on or around her birthday, January 17th. Senator Tim Scott will make a special presentation. There will be an Eartha Kitt memorabilia drawing and the Columbia City Ballet will perform to her songs. That's at 5 p.m. tomorrow at the North High School Gym. Tickets cost $20. Coming up on News 10 Sunrise, the partial government shutdown rolls on toward the 30 day mark and it's not just U.S. workers being impacted. The ripple effect being felt around the globe still ahead. Here's a snapshot this morning of Monday morning. These are actual what feels like temperatures with the wind chill, maybe 10 in Chesterfield, teens elsewhere. A mighty cold air headed our way. We'll detail your forecast coming up. Trending this morning, supporters in the Northeast are rallying around a puppy to make sure he lives life to the fullest, Tim. Mm. This eight-week-old German Shepherd named Logan in Washington State has multiple heart conditions. Vets say Logan does not have long to live, so a nonprofit called Rescued Hearts Northwest asked supporters to make a bucket list for Logan. The rescue group says ideas came pouring in, and now the pup is living life according to that list. So far, he's enjoyed a visit to the beach, chowing down on burgers and ice cream, playing at a toy store, and getting hugs from as many people as possible. I like that list, Tim. The organization yeah. hopes the outpouring of love will inspire others to help dogs in need. You can follow Logan's story on the Rescue's Facebook page. Oh, poor look on his face. Makes me sad. Yeah, it's just sad, but they, he is really kind of living it up. Burgers, hugs, <laughs> doesn't get any better than that. Is there ice cream? Yeah, exactly. A butcher shop's most loyal customer isn't a human, it's a dog. Neighbors say Fletcher, the dog, showed up at a butcher shop in Brisbane, Australia one day and would not leave. So they gave him a bone and Fletcher eventually left. But the next day, Fletcher turned up again. And now 10 years later, the dog is still making his daily trip to that butcher shop for his treat. These days, the trip takes a little longer because Fletcher, who is now 13 years old, has arthritis and his hearing isn't so great, but his owner says his sense of smell and sense of direction are still spot on. And so he's still making that trip to and from the shop every day. I love that. <laughs> Bless his heart. Well, the show continues to go to the dogs because a dog. All about the dogs today. <laughs> stole the show in a fashion event <laughs> Wednesday after walking onto a runway. Take a look at this. The tail wagging uh, dog became the center of attention as it sort of mingled with the models on the catwalk. The dog on the catwalk, that's confusing <laughs> as, as, as in itself. Uh, the dog had, just came from nowhere. The models were unfazed and continued to walk the runway. True professionals. Exactly, but the crowd got, a, of course, a good laugh from the doggy intruder. The dog eventually uh, took off 
to the bushes <laughs> to do some business. <laughs> At least he was a calm dog. He That's seems right. very he sweet. He could have done more damage <laughs> than that. So That's true. He could have gone a lot worse. That is very, very <laughs> true. Wow. That's fascinating. It's Stories All about, about the dogs, dogs on I'm this Friday. You. Speaking of Friday, Tim, we are ready for the weekend, but uh, not so pretty. Yeah, well, the weather is going to the dogs here before too long. <laughs> that's for sure. This morning, it's nice if you're walking your four-legged friends or uh, yourself, for that matter. We have temperatures in the 40s. Remember, we were in the 30s yesterday. Thanks for waking up with Sunrise. I'm Emily Scarlett. Leland and Mary have the morning off. You may want to enjoy the small break from bitterly cold and rainy weather today. Meteorologist Tim Miller is in the Weather Center with more on the change coming very soon. Right, Tim? Uh, <laughs> very soon to you. Exactly. Good morning, Emily. Welcome to uh, Friday TGIF. Here we are this morning. Thanks, Tim. New information. Columbia Fire officials are inspecting apartments in the Allen Benedict Court Complex on Reed Street this morning after several gas leaks were found late last night. This comes after two people were found dead in separate units within that same building earlier in the day. We're told the first was found by officers during a welfare check after that person reportedly did not show up for work. The second found two doors down by officers after a neighbor said she hadn't seen that person in a few days. No official cause of death has been revealed, but residents say they smell gas odor in recent days. Officials say autopsies will shed more light on what happened. So oftentimes when you have unintended death, um, especially if there's not a sign of trauma, immediate sign of trauma, um, you looking at situations involving gas, especially this time of year or, or carbon monoxide, um, or narcotics. The Columbia Housing Authority is helping those tenants displaced by the gas leaks. Ahead on sunrise at 630, we're hearing from one neighbor who says smelling gas is a common problem at the complex, and now she's taking action. Also new on sunrise, state officials are hoping to combat the dangers of illegal cell phones behind bars by giving inmates tablets. Corrections Director Brian Sterling told the Associated Press that the devices will help inmates make calls home at a cheaper rate, obtain education, and even buy pre-approved streaming movie and music services via a secure Wi-Fi network. Sterling says he hopes the devices will make cell phones less attractive to inmates. In our crime alert now, Lexington police say they need your help to track down a thief. Take a look at this surveillance video. Police say this woman stole hundreds of dollars worth of meat from the Lowe's Foods on Sunset Boulevard back on January 3rd. It's believed she was traveling in a red SUV. Call Crime Stoppers at one crime sc if you know anything. A man who was caught on camera throwing hot coffee onto a teenage employee at a McDonald's in Camden is now out of jail on bond. Joshua Noel surrendered to authorities Wednesday, charged with second degree assault and battery for the incident in late December. Here's that video that has since made national headlines. Camden police say Noel was upset about his wait for French fries. Inside our schools now, if you're a teacher looking for work, Richland School District 1 wants you. The district is holding its annual job fair next week, but today is the last day to register to participate in the event. You must have or be eligible for a South Carolina teaching certificate by June 30th. And if you specialize in math, science or special education, you could get a $1,000 early signing bonus. The job fair will be held January 26th at WJ Keenan High School. We have registration information on our website, wistv.com. In Lexington 2, Brooklyn KC athletes will soon be able to play in their new arena. School leaders say the first event will be the rivalry basketball games against Airport High School this coming Tuesday. Here are pictures of that 1500 seat arena, which includes a college length basketball court, state of the art weight room with a 50 yard turf run, plus a Hall of Fame room. This is all part of the $225 million package of improvements approved by Lexington 2 voters back in 2014. 
In the meantime, Lexington Richland School District 5 is freezing enrollment at Chapin Elementary School. Officials say this is to address the overcrowding issue at the school. Any new families moving to the Chapin Elementary and Lake Murray Elementary attendance zones after January 22nd will be reassigned to a school with available space and capacity for additional students. All families moving into neighborhoods impacted by the freeze will have the option of selecting the schools listed on your screen now for reassignment. Transportation will also be available to impacted families choosing either Ballantyne, Dutch Fork, or River Springs Elementary Schools. Enrollment at Chapin Elementary increased after the district placed a freeze at Lake Murray Elementary School last year. State lawmakers are also thinking about ways to address school enrollment. A live look over the state house now where a bill on district consolidation is in the works. Ahead at 630, we tell you why lawmakers say the proposal is easier said than done. It's no secret the roads in South Carolina can be pretty bad and bumpy. That's why SCDOT officials are out launching their pothole blitz to repair trouble spots over the next few weeks. Our Genesis Narrows rode around with SCDOT off Bush River Road and tells us what goes on behind the scenes. On my ride along, I saw crews fill about six or seven potholes. SCDOT tells us they've received nearly 5,000 reports of pothole locations from the public just in the first week of their campaign. 609 this morning. Let's take a look at temperatures from the southeast. Trending this morning, a Florida suspect on the run is now in custody, and authorities say they have a few horses to thank for this really? capture. Take a look at this, mm. Tim, this infrared video from Thursday in Volusia County, where you can see the suspect running into a pasture to try and escape law enforcement. Oh yeah, there he is. There he is, but <laughs> all of a sudden, three horses start chasing the suspect who proceeded to jump a fence to get away. The man was eventually caught by sheriff's deputies. So I uh, don't want to take on the horses there or the cops, no, but no. definitely not the horses. They were not horsing around. It was serious <laughs> business. And Tim, with all the rain that's fallen this month here in the Midlands, mm -hmm. people have been finding hidden poems popping up on Columbia sidewalk. Sounds very cool. Really? A lot of you have been talking about this online. Water reveals the poems on downtown Columbia sidewalks. The people behind the idea say they wanted to make literary public art in places where people would not expect. If you'd like to go on a hunt for these poems, rain or shine, there's a full map of all the invisible poem locations on the WIS website and our app. So, you know, I typically don't enjoy wow. walks in the rain, but that, that might make it a little more fun. So in order to see it, it has to be wet? Yes, yeah, so you've either got to bring a bucket of water or take that walk in the rain. Well, that's a luck because <laughs> that's easily done here recently with yeah, the forecast. And we've right? got some chances coming up this weekend. Yeah, there'll be poems all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, this morning, it's not bad temperature-wise. Take a look outside here this morning. How are you? Welcome to Friday. I'm in the Weather Center with meteorologist Tim Miller, who's keeping an eye on possible rain for the weekend, Tim. Possible rain indeed, and definitely some cold temperatures. Not what we want to hear on I this know. happy Friday. I Tim. know, it's happy Friday. Let's <laughs> try to keep it that way, at least so far this morning. Emily, let's take a look at uh, the satellite view this morning. Well, how about some good news? I know I'm all full of bad news, right? Well, with the clouds and a little bit of a southerly wind, it is much warmer this morning. Continuing coverage now. Columbia fire officials working throughout the morning, inspecting apartments in the Allen Benedict Court Complex on Reed Street after several gas leaks were found late last night. This comes after two people were found dead in separate units within that same building earlier in the day yesterday. No official cause of death has been revealed. Our Miranda Parnell was on the scene to speak with tenants who say they've had issues with gas fumes before and they're upset that this case may be connected with problems in the past. Now, folks out here told us that this isn't the first time that they've had issues with fumes. We're told the Columbia Housing Authority is helping those tenants displaced by the gas leaks. And we'll continue to update this developing story on WISTV.com, your WIS news app, and on air.
New information this morning. The suspect arrested after crashing into a Waffle House in Casey is out on bond. According to online records, we first brought you this story as breaking news on sunrise yesterday. Gregory Alexander Maxwell has been charged with driving under the influence and failure to stop. Highway Patrol says early yesterday morning, a vehicle sped past a trooper on I-26 westbound. Maxwell then took Columbia Airport exit, according to officials, and pulled into the Waffle House parking lot, driving right into the corner of the building on Airport Boulevard. No one inside the restaurant was hurt. Happening today, we could learn more on how our local leaders are combating human trafficking during the Richland County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force meeting. A recent report listed Richland County as the number one county in the state for reported trafficking cases. Officials say Columbia is more susceptible to this crime because of its position between Atlanta and Charlotte. This meeting is part of Human Trafficking Awareness Month underway right now. The task force will meet at 10 a.m. at the Decker Center on Decker Boulevard. Inside the state house now, there is a race against time to save jobs and lower energy rates for South Carolinians. State House reporter Jason Raven has more on that, plus the changes that could be coming to your child's school district. We'll continue to watch this, keep you updated on air and online with the very latest. All right, so at least we'll have some time to kind of warm up this weekend before that cold yes, air comes exactly. in. We'll need it. Thanks for starting your day with us on this happy Friday. We are back with your news at noon.